The years of stalemate on the Western Front were decisively ended in August 1918 when the Allied nations launched the first of a series of offensives that drove the German army out of France and threatened to take the war onto German soil, forcing the German government to sue for peace. The resulting armistice came into effect at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. The Great War had ended with an Allied victory. The Road to Victory series reveals the parts played by the Army Corps during 1918 and the final phase of the war, the period which came to be known as the 100 Days Offensive. Communications on the battlefield comprise of four key elements. Deception, secrecy, command and control. I'm going to take you through the story of the Battle of Amiens and the 100 Day Offensive and show how communications provided that vital link to ensure success. The communication plan for the Battle of Amiens was complex and involved all forms of military signalling, including wireless and line, visual signalling and pigeons. I'm going to concentrate on the story of wireless and show how, for the first time, wireless made a real impact on the battlefield. The communication plan for Amiens was complex, and even during the build-up, wireless played a key role. It was noticed that during any attack or campaign against the Germans, there would be a peak in radio traffic as the build-up in troops and equipment had started to happen. This meant that the Germans became aware through the radio traffic analysis that something was going on. We wanted to hide that fact, so signalers formed a kind of radio deception which they described as radio camouflage. This ensured that there was no peak in traffic to hide any troop movement, so the radio traffic was kept at a steady state during the whole of the build-up to the campaign. A key element to the deception plan was the movement of the Canadian Corps of 118,000 troops. Their movement towards Amiens was hidden by setting up dummy wireless stations in Flanders to give the impression of attack at Arras. This would tie down enemy personnel and sow confusion in the intelligence reports of the Germans. Another key part of the deception plan was silent days. It had been realised that prior to an attack it was standard practice to have a day of radio silence. But it was clear that the Germans interpret this as a sign of an impending attack. It was therefore thought they could mask this attack by a series of sporadic silent days during the build-up in the campaign. The final part of the deception plan was the timing of the artillery barrage. Prior to Amiens, any attack was preceded by days of bombardment to soften up the enemy position, therefore giving away the timing of the attack. At Amiens, the artillery attack was the signal for the offensive to begin. Once the attack had started, signalers provided command and control for the battlefield commander to ensure that his battle plan was carried out. They also provide intelligence from the front line of any troop movement or counterattack by the enemy. At Amiens, the difficulty for signalers was the incredible speed of movement of the front line, up to 13 kilometers a day. This stretched the resources of signalers to provide communications backwards and forwards from headquarters to the front line. As the offensive continued, signalers provided a continuity of information using a mixture of line, wireless and visual signalling. The success of Amiel was dependent on surprise. To enable this, schemes were planned around deception and secrecy. All of these involve wireless. Wireless also played a key role in command and control, providing artillery with intelligence and targeting information and the movement of troops and tanks on the ground. For the first time, effective use of wireless had a key role and a major impact on the battlefield. It sowed doubt and confusion in the enemy with its deception plans, but clarity and intelligence for Allied battlefield commanders. Wireless enabled a new type of mobile warfare and was a major contributor in the success at the Battle of Amiens and the Hundred Days Offensive.